Hi, this is Paul Neal at Pen Productions. I'm going to show you around the Dorito effect. I have no idea where that name came from, uh, but it is basically this. So when doing facial rigs, it's nice to use morph targets because morph targets allow you to be able to get nice wrinkles, more fine control over shaping the mesh exactly the way you're going to want to uh, work with it. In this case, I'm, I'm mixing together four targets to be able to get this nice motion going in here and be able to get nice wrinkles happening. Problems with morph targets is, is that animators don't have the flexibility to get any shape at any time they want that may not have been pre-thought of. So what they really like to have is controls that are actually stuck onto the surface as well. Ones that allow them to be able to go in and shape the face and give more you know, finite control at the point that they might need it to be able to uh, you know, make the character emote in ways that they like. So. The interesting part about the Dorito effect here is that it is actually a dependency loop, it appears to be. So when I uh, move a control, it moves the mesh, and when the mesh moves, it moves the control. That normally isn't something that you can uh, do. So here's how I go about creating that Dorito effect. I'm going to start off with a plane. I'm just going to make it uh, 20 by 20, nice and large with just 10 units on it. Uh, I'm going to make this one uh, bright red, for instance, and I'm also going to call this one the Morph Mesh to get us started. I'm going to make a quick copy of that, and this one's going to be called the Skin Mesh. And I'm going to make one more, and this is going to be called a Target to get us going on a, as a target. So let me go get the Skin Mesh. I'm going to go and make that blue. I want to make our target green so we can identify everything that's going on. I'm going to grab them all and just convert them down to edit polys. Let's just get a target going first off. I'll just do a basic soft select here and get ourselves a morph target. Back over to the morph mesh and I'm going to hit X and type in morpher and then in the channel add our target so that we can see our target going up and down. Just so that we don't have to keep scrubbing and finding that, I'm just going to go in and animate it really fast just so that we can see what's going on. So there we go. So we now have an animated morpher on our morph object um, uh, that's going to be handling the morphing. Next we're going to need a point helper. So I'm going to drop a point helper in and just maybe give it a size of uh, 2 for instance. And this object is actually going to be stuck to the morphing surface. So it's actually going to be stuck onto the uh, surface of the object that's uh, currently morphing here using an attachment constraint. So I want to attach it on, and then I'm just going to set the position uh, somewhere in the middle. And I'm not at frame zero, so it wants to animate it. There we go. We'll just say drop it there. And I'm going to turn off uh, align to surface so that it doesn't uh, uh, orientate itself to the surface. And you can see now that it's going up and down. Next, we're going to need a control object that's going to be really simple. I'm just going to use a circle, and I'm going to drop that in. And I'm just going to add an X-Form modifier, and in the gizmo of the X-Form modifier, I'm just going to move the uh, geometry up. Again, you could have done that in other ways as well, just to leave the pivot at the same place. And I'm going to link this object now down to the point helper that's attached to the surface, so they both go up and down at this point now. Next we're going to need is a couple more point helpers, so I'm going to make one more, and I'm going to make this a bit bigger, Oops, not 40, but 4, and I'm going to align this as well. I think I'll make this uh, a different color so it really stands out here. Maybe make it green as well. There we go, that's better. Our new point helper is going to be aligned up to the old point helper. I'm not going to link it in though. It's going to sit there and float in world space. It would usually get linked into the base of the rig, so the very root of the character rig a little large. Let's take that down to a 3. I'm going to make a copy of that, Control v and I'm going to say copy, but I'm going to change the name on this one just to Bone, and let's make this one a 4. This is to make sure things stay in uh, uh, local spaces, so I'm going to link this down to the other one that's not moving, so essentially these are the ones that don't move in our uh, scene now. Uh, so we just have a root node here. Didn't necessarily need this, but it's, uh, uh, it's well, probably do actually need it. You'll see as we get into it, you'll need it for uh, orientation. In this case, we wouldn't need it, but in orientation of a face, you'd need that extra uh, uh, root one in there. 
So now what we need to do is we need to do a little bit of hooking up of these and we need to get our uh, skinned mesh working as well. So let's just for, first get a bit of uh, skin mesh working. So let's just go and grab our skin node here and go and get the skin modifier. And in the skin modifier, I'm going to turn off weight all verts and I'm going to go in and say add bone. So there's our bone uh, point helper. And um, I'm just going to go in and just weight everything down to begin with here. So everything is absolutely just done by weights. We don't need the uh, display of the, um, oops, the uh, vertices. There we go. So now um, with all that uh, said and done, I'm going to norm take normalize off and set the weight to those to zero. I'm going to go grab, you know, start in the bone in the middle. And I'm going to paint a little bit of weight just right in the middle here. And then I'm going to actually set it to relative. And let's just do some smoothing. And just get a bit of a bump going here. So what we should have now. is our surface being pulled up. Let's just uh, increase the strength of that a little bit uh, so that it works a little bit better. Um, I'm going to uh, grab that bone and I'm just going to say uh, select effect adverts and we should be able to, uh, I don't think we're even going to need to, I guess the doesn't seem to be wanting to display with me doing what I'm doing now for whatever reason. So let's just try painting on it some more. Oh, there we go. And I'm just going to pull that weight right down. There we go. Maybe just to make sure it moves with everything. And let's just again just do a bit of relaxing on that just to soften it. That oh, looks pretty good. So I think it's pretty obvious now what's happening. So let's take this and make sure it's aligned back and this is our bone and just make sure it's back to where it was started from. Okay, so there we go. So now we have a bone that's affecting the, um, uh, the skin mesh. We have a morph targets that are affecting the, uh, the morph mesh and our control that's moving on it. So now what we want to do is we want to do a little bit of uh, connection. So I'm going to go and grab our bone and the control that's going to have to end up controlling it. And I'm going to freeze transform on both of those so we have uh, transforms frozen. Now I'm going to do a quick little setup here where I take the, um, go into dope sheet. And I'm going to go in and grab the position track, the, the zeroed out position track for the control object. And I'm going to say copy. I'm going to grab the bone and I'm going to go and paste it into the same place and I'm going to say paste instance. So let's paste it as an instance. Same thing, I'm going to go and grab the uh, rotation track. I'm going to say copy and I'm going to say paste instance. And if we wanted, we could even do the scale because you'd like to be able to scale them as well. And we'll drop that in and again, we'll say paste instance. So now what I have is the control object is pulling the bone and affecting the skin mesh. And you can see now what happens is the skin mesh is getting left behind because it's happening in local space because we've uh, copied local controllers. Now when I move my control object, you can see underneath the skin mesh deforming. Let's grab the morph. Uh, which has got the target and let's just we usually dump it down in the bottom and I'm going to grab the very bottom and I'm going to go and add the skin mesh. So here's the skin mesh. I'm going to crank it up to 100 and turn on automatically reload targets. Now the automatically reload targets is important uh, to note a couple of things. One, it's going to be automatically reloading this one as well. But once this target is deleted from the scene, it won't actually do that anymore and it won't cause any overhead for all the other morph channels. It'll just be loading this one at the bottom. So if we try it now, what we're going to find is, is that the surface is being morphed. So we can see that our, not only is our skinned mesh moving up, you can only see the one now, 
but you can see that it's actually moving up. So if I move along to a frame and then move our control, you can see that it's actually deforming the red morph mesh even more because we're loading that target underneath. The biggest problem that we can see here is, of course, our control object is moving twice as fast. This would become very disconcerting and very problematic uh, very quickly um, you know, with, the, uh, with this sort of setup. So we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, it's actually really quite easy to do. I'm just going to transform to zero there. It's really quite easy to do. I'm going to go into the dope sheet. I'm going to go into the position. The rotation won't actually have the problem. You can see that it's not causing a double transform uh, when we work on it. So you can see that that works fine. So what we're going to do to solve this is we're going to go into the position list controller, properties. We're going to take the position track that's currently active and we're going to set its weight to zero. So this means the user will have no effect in its actual position now when they go to move it. And when it moves, it still moves. And the reason it's moving is, is because these two are tied together, the bone and the, the, uh, um, the skin, uh, skin, you know, uh, the, the, the bone point helper and the control. And the skinned mesh is loading back into the mesh that's moving our point on the surface, which is moving the control. So what it looks like is, is we actually have something that moves, even though the weight of the controller is set to zero. It means we can go along and find any point and be able to manipulate it even more. Transform that to zero, and you can see at frame 20, there's our morph target. And then we have the ability to be able to create a point and move it around, rotate it, if we wish. Say so transform to zero, turn on animate, pull that out. And we have what's known as the Dorito effect. That's simple. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoy making some really cool facial rigs with it.